Yeah, so some welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Well, yesterday I spoke about building a hot house, and today I spent the best part of an hour and a half and framed the first one up. This is it. This is what it's going to look like. Now, I know a lot of you don't have the space to build one or think I'm crazy that I'm talking about something like this and saying you guys should go and build one yourself. It doesn't have to be this big, it doesn't have to be this shape, it doesn't have to be this tall. It can be a simple little cover over a raised garden bed if you have, and I've shown you some of those. That's my bubble wrap over there. That you can basically pack up at the end of the season and bring it out again when you need to, when it gets cold again, if you need it. Now this one here is actually a large one, and you know why I'm doing it, because I've got this long raised garden bed, and my cucumbers and my capsicums aren't growing, literally not growing. I have them watered today, purposely, so that I can get them to heat up a bit. They're not wilting, they're not going to grow, because they need the water. Remember that, without water there's no life. So, this hot house, I am excited. Now, don't look at it too hard. <laughs> Anybody who's into structural work, you know that I used to be a structural engineer in the past. That was my past life, by the way. Anyway, this hasn't been braced yet. It's just been nail gun to get together. I've got to put some cross bracing on it. I've got to screw it together tight before we cover it, because otherwise it'll be like a big wind sail and it'll rip out the garden bed. So what we're doing here, this is where the doors are going. So we're building it in so it'll close flush, hinged on the outside. It'll actually fold all the way up and clip at the top. And then when it closes, half the frame will sit on here and the other side of the door, the other half will sit there and the bottom half will touch on the sleeper there so it'll close shut beautifully. And if I need to get air in, lift it up, let it breathe and then close it again at the end of the day. Now with hot houses, for those who've got them and haven't used them for a long time and finding plants are wilting or they're getting mildew or they're getting white fly, they need airflow. Even though it's a hot house, you still need to have an air, airflow coming through there if it gets too hot, that is. You don't open it up every day if it's only 16 degrees outside, but when it gets to 22, 23, like today, I don't know what temperature it is, but that sun's got a bit of bite in it and I'm loving it. But remember to slip slop and slap. <laughs> oh, I nearly got him. <laughs> anyway, he didn't flinch. Can you believe that? Because he's like a rock. <laughs> now, today's warm enough to print, so I'm going to show you a quick demo for those who still haven't worked out how to print a tomato plant. I need some more string here. Let's start on this one here. They all need to be pruned because they're getting quite dense. What we talk about is you've got your central leader, you pick your main stalk that grows up that you're going to train, whether it's one, two, or three, or four maybe five if you like. But with every main one that you've got growing, the, the leaves where they come out, just where the leaf connects to the main stalk, have a look there, there's another shoot coming out. So that there could potentially become another upright leader. You've got to pick it off, pinch it off. See another one down there? See it there? That one there again, from the leaf, where the leaf is, pinch it off. You can just break it off or use secateurs. The pocket pruners are really good for this because they've got a nice little pointy nose on them. And if we work our way up here to the top, there's just another one growing in here. See that there? There's another one there. So that's starting to grow there. Now, as it develops, it's not, that's not where the flowers come from. The flowers will be produced halfway up along the stem. For example, here, see that there? That's the flower cluster. Now you leave that alone, but you can see just above the flowers, there's another stalk coming up, and to the other side, there's another one growing there. Now you can leave both of them if you like, or you're gonna to have to remove one of them to become the main leader to continue on. Otherwise, this is where it terminates. You can pinch this one off because it looks like it's coming off from halfway up the leaf and it's on the same run as the flowers. So you're probably better off leaving that one there as being the main stalk to continue growing. It'll be a lot more sturdier. That's one of the stalks. Now we've got clusters of leaves getting tangled up in here. You can remove some of them if you like or do nothing and just let them just get sick. <laughs> Airflow is important. We've had a lot of wind here, so I'm not too worried about the clusters for me, but I'm pinching off the other bottom stalks. Here's one there, okay? Oh, I just remembered. A lot of you have been asking, can you plant these and will they grow from that? Not even from that, from a leaf. See, that there is a shoot. You can actually plant a leaf and watch it grow. Have we got one over here? I think we do. Come over here. That's actually an offcut that I've taken from the plant here, right next to it. Popped it in the ground, removed all the little leaves on it, the, the leaflets. And watch it, look, it's actually flowering. It's got leaves coming up and a little cluster of flowers. Well, that obviously has got roots, otherwise it would have wilted away. That's not the only one I've done. Have a look under here. I stuck three of them. One, 
two, three. These were cuttings again from this plant here. Straight underneath it, a little bit too much shade now, but nevertheless, they're growing. So if you want to propagate from the plant that you love, because A, maybe the plant's been diseased and you've taken some cuttings earlier on, or you're about to take some cuttings that are clean, or the plant's going backwards because the weather has been really hard on it, Remember, you can do it by a cutting. You can take a leaf, you can take a little shoot and propagate that straight underneath it or somewhere away from it, if in case it's got a bit of a disease on it, and rest assured you'll be able to continue growing your plant. Otherwise, wait for the flowers to set fruit and wait for the fruit to make seed. And I'll teach you how to harvest the seed and store it as well. In the meantime, check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. If you're building a hothouse and you need some more advice on it, go online, Google it, there's plenty there. Don't hassle me about that. <laughs> no, you can if you like to. And if you've got any garden problems, obviously you can email us as well with your questions. Our black grit 18 kilo is gonna end. There's only about seven or eight days before the 24th. Once the 24th hits midnight, that's the end before you, you won't be able to ship it out again or order it online for shipping. Plus, you go into the draw for a big chance to win a $500 garden hamper. So all that is available at VasiliesGarden.com. Until tomorrow, from me, Vasili, Maresi.